The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. So welcome back to Generations Radio, and happy holidays to everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and thanks to all the baby boomers tuning in. I know I get a lot of emails and calls from those of you that are taking care of your parents, and also really is starting to think about what they're going to do, what you're going to do as you age. You know, I was telling somebody the other day that I bought long-term care insurance a few months ago, and he said, well, it's so expensive. I said, well, I'm paying about 2100 a year for long-term care insurance. He goes, oh, wow, that wasn't bad. And the audience I was talking to was with a bunch of financial advisors. So if the financial advisors think that long-term care insurance expense is expensive, then I think uh, they need to look more into it because I tell you, I'd rather pay twenty five hundred a year than uh, uh, five thousand a month. You know, so yeah, it's very expensive. Miss Leah, our engineer here, going wow. But anyway, so anyway, uh, our December January uh, magazine is out. So you know, you can pick it up at any state library. There are 50 of them in, in Hawaii. Uh, also, we always say where, where seniors go. So at the YMCA, all the senior clubs, all the hospitals. Uh, my, one of my favorite places is a big city diner, Vacations Hawaii. But, um, you know, the library is part of Best Bet. If you get a chance, uh, check it out online at generations808.com. But um, one of our cover, st- cover persons here is in the studio today, Mr. Tony Lunzer, uh, retired professor from UH. Welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you, Purse. Happy to be here. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm no, happy to be alive, right? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> so I, I say that jokingly because uh, I love, I've known Tony for many years, and he is actually, uh, give you a little background, he's the original uh, director on aging, the Center of Aging at University of Hawaii. Now, Tony, what year did you start that? Well, I started at the university in 1969. Right. It took quite a while before we were able to get the center uh, approved, and that was 1988. That's a big. That's a big uh, gap there. It took that long, but give us a little background. I know you said you went to went to college in was it Michigan? Well, I went to graduate school in Michigan, and that's where I be. <laughs> that's where I became a gerontologist. And it, how did that become? Because you weren't originally in gerontology. No, right? I wasn't. I was uh, planning on going into sociology and uh, was in the doctoral program in sociology at the University of Michigan. Very good program. But I was looking around for a job because I had a family. And uh, in 1956, the chairman of my department, uh, asked me if I would be interested in applying for a job in gerontology. And I had to ask him, <laughs> what is gerontology? <laughs> really? I had no idea. Wow. Well, gerontology is uh, the study of aging, and it looks at the needs of older people and what can be done to uh, make life better. All of those things go into gerontology. So I did my first job in 1956, started then, and I've been in the field ever since. Well, I commend you for that. I mean, so, I mean, when, when, to go into a field you didn't know anything about, did, did, that, did that, I mean, did well, that, when, that you, interest- when, when you're that age, you figure you can do anything. <laughs> learn anything, and it was actually a new field, Percy, and so there weren't that many people in it sure. who uh, had any background or experience. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean, that you must have been in your 20s and I to, was. to do that, and, and what does a 20-year-old think about, I got to worry about or study old people now? 
Yeah, you get a very, di- very, very different picture when you're in your 20s or 30s than when you're, as I am, in my 80s. <laughs> I'm 87 now. Uh, but in those days, uh, my initial job was to, uh, what shall I say, was to learn about the needs of older people in Michigan, and then to uh, work with a group of citizens to prepare recommendations for the ledge on how to improve conditions of life for Michigan's elders. And uh, so we did a lot of uh, surveys and uh, hearings throughout the state of Michigan to try to find out what the, what the needs were. It's interesting how, I mean, back then, there might not, there must not have been too many states to be doing that uh, because if it took Hawaii uh, maybe, what, uh, 20 more years to figure it out that we need a center on aging. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this. What year did you come to Hawaii in the late, late 60s? came to Hawaii in 1969. Wow. And let me ask you this. Did, were you aware that uh, down the road Hawaii would be one of the older states in the country? Did you know that? No, then? I really <laughs> didn't have that much background uh, about Hawaii when I came here. But I came because there was a tremendous opportunity offered by UH to create from scratch a whole interdisciplinary gerontology program as well as teaching courses at the School of Public Health. So I regarded it as a wonderful opportunity, and it has been all these all these years. Yeah, and you remain in Hawaii all these years, too. You I did. At home. Do you get back to the mainland much at all? No, very little. <laughs> I really don't do much It's too cold anyway, right? It's too cold. I as Michigan. you can see, I have my yeah. winter clothes on today. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I play sports, but I, when I see these Michigan and Wisconsin and games, and it's in freezing cold playing, trying to play football on a hard surface, it, it just... I'm 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 glad I'm from Hawaii and live in Hawaii, but that's a great story, Tony. And and now look at this: Hawaii is the oldest state in the country, and you're still and you guys, t- Tony is still advocating and still going to meetings on a weekly basis. Um, and then in the when you started the college in what eighty eight, I think it was eighty nine. Well, I started at UH in nineteen sixty nine. That was when I came here. The center itself was created in 88. I see. And if you didn't see it yet, um, our new Generations TV show that's airing now for the next couple of weeks on Oceana Cable, or if you can go to our YouTube channel or our website, generations808.com, Tony is featured in there in one of the segments because he was just honored. Actually, why don't you back up? He is a co-founder of an organization called the Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society, which actually I am the president this year, or the last two years this year. And what year was that, Tony, that you started that? You co-founded that with the other professors? Oh, Lord. Gosh. What was year like, was that? 86, Pe- 87. Persa, I'm not <laughs> really sure. My memory is not what it... No, that's not true. My memory has always been terrible. But for <laughs> dates, I can yeah, barely I mean, remember my own birthday. Don't worry. Well, HPGS, if you go to hpgs.org, it's Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society. Um, it's it's a uh, organization of professionals. It is open to the public, uh, and so you can join. It's basically an organization that meets on a regular basis um, that provides webinars and meetings uh, and information for professionals in the field. But it is open up to the public if anybody wants to join and be a member. It's very reasonable. But I think it's like I don't know, forty or fifty dollars a year. Uh, we have a big annual semi annual conference coming up next year. Uh, but we do webinars, and we actually house them on our website at hpgs.org if you want to go back and, and view and listen to them. Uh, we have professionals in the field trying to educate uh, our professionals about different things like elder abuse and Medicare and, and caregiving and Alzheimer's. So it's really important. If you want to do that, I'll take a look at that. But So I, I, just remember, I remember you telling me a story about when you first you just co-founded it with a few other professors, I think, back in the day, with just you. Well, I was the first 
president, but there were a group of others who actually worked on the first conference, conference. and got the organization started. Yeah. And I remember the story you tell me, I think, you how you funded the first conference? Yeah, you had to get to get everybody to put in $100 or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> Well, uh, that was kind of similar to the experience people had when the uh, when the American Society on Aging was first organized. It was called the Western Gerontological Society. Oh, really? And the members of the board of directors put in their own money to get the organization started, and that's not so unusual. Hmm. Uh, we, we put our money where our mouth is. If we care, we're willing to do that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, I'm actually, I'm actually going to the, the National Conference next year in March. Uh, it's, it's in San Francisco. That's the reason why I love San Francisco. But the ASA, yeah, if you're listening, if you want more information, American Society on Aging is, is a great resource as well. You can become a member and get, get their uh, quarterly uh, uh, magazine book. Uh, got great resources. They do webinars almost every week now that I've seen, but it's ASA.org, I believe it is. But so, so, Tony, in the early days, how did the students, I know you did taught a lot of classes, how did the students, were they taking it, were they interested in, in aging, or were they just, oh, this is a class, might be an easy class? No, I think that when we started, and this was true really for many years, the students who came into our programs were, ones who had had prior contact with older people, Mm. primarily. They were kids who maybe were raised by a grandmother or had taken care of a grandpa when he was ill. In other words, they had a personal connection that impelled them to move into the field professionally. Uh, Now, that was not always the case, but a very significant proportion of our students were motivated by their own family experience. I guess that makes a lot of sense. In fact, a lot of the, a lot of the leaders in Hawaii now have, were your students back in the day. Yeah. yeah? That's true. And uh, so Tony was just recognized, if you watched the Generations TV show on this, this, these next few days, uh, Tony's featured in there. We had a uh, great event. Our HPGS had a event at Kahala Nui that we honored Tony with. And check it out. Um, some of the biggest leaders and movers and shakers in our aging industry were at this dinner. And it was, uh, it was probably one of the best networking events we've had in a long, long time. And I got to thank you for that, Tony. And Tony was recognized by the state capitol, the Senate side, and also the House of Representatives. And actually, you have the experience of working in the capitol, don't you? Well, I spent uh, a <laughs> yeah, small, small... Uh, coincidence here. I spent three sessions in the office of a certain senator, Senator Les Ihara Jr., whose name is familiar to Perth yeah. for, for family reasons. And uh, I was able to uh, help Senator Ihara with questions related to aging. Now, but I think it's really important. I mean, we're trying to in fact, uh, what Tony's talking about is that my brother actually wanted to learn more about aging and why not have the, the first director on aging, the Center on Aging at the University of Hawaii, to really educate him. Uh, and, and now he is one of the leaders in the state capital on aging. Uh, it's really important. And hopefully we can get more politicians involved because uh, they need to understand the, the, the issues going on with our state. As we all live longer, we're all going to have to deal with our parents you know, I was mentioning to um, Mike Buck this morning that uh, caregiving and, and, and aging in Hawaii, let alone the country, is going to be one of the biggest financial and social problems we're going to face this century. You know, it was interesting. Uh, now, don't get this, take this wrong. I was reading a paper the other day about homelessness and all the statistics on homelessness in the state of Hawaii. There's, what, 7,200 homeless in the state of Hawaii. That's counted. I'm sure there's several thousand more than uncounted. But we have over, what, 200,000 people caring for somebody in the state of Hawaii? Um, well, the numbers yeah. vary. It depends on talking to? which part of the population you're looking at. But right. somewhere 
between 150 and 200,000 people are probably caregivers for uh, adults in their family, and the adults are usually parents or grandparents. And it's something like 25 to 27,000 people in the state of Hawaii have Alzheimer's dementia related diseases, and that's documented. As you guys know, a lot of them are not, not documented. If you're a parent or loved one is not documented, you I re- highly recommend you to get them documented so you understand what the future is going to be for you, what kind of resources you're going to need. Because I think as it goes forward, I think the University of Hawaii got a grant, right, uh, to educate not only the public but our doctors and nurses that they need to start doing this. It's really critical that the families are, make, are made aware, uh, not just put it off as old age, um, take the time to do a, a, a very in-depth interview with that their clients because I, what I see almost every day now, we get calls and emails from people that don't know what to do and who to call. And so I just tell them, call the All Summers Association. They have weekly meetings, support group meetings somewhere on this island every week. And you got to start talking to other people that are in your same situation. You see that as a great crisis as well, Tony? Yes, I do, and I mean, it came home to me when my wife began to develop dementia, and I realized that even though, you know, I'm supposedly knowledgeable about the field, uh, caring for somebody with dementia is a great deal different from reading about caring about somebody and until you've had the experience, you don't know what you're up against. And your idea of calling the or contacting the Alzheimer's people or getting on the, uh, the ADRC website, that's uh, Aging and Disability Resource Center website uh, for information about dementia, or even Googling it and looking at uh, what your computer tells you. You've, you've got a lot of resources out there, but you've got you to gotta use them. Yeah. So in your experience, if I can, if I can ask, I mean, no, being an, as knowledgeable as you are, I wonder how families are dealing with that don't have that knowledge or background, and how do they cope with the... Everything from emotional to financial to this, a spiritual change in that person's life and your family. Well, I think, Pers, your point is well taken. There are financial consequences. There are psychological and emotional consequences for the caregivers. Uh, it's tough, and um, you really, you really need to work out a plan to involve. Your family members, uh, if you can afford it, to bring people in from the outside when you need extra help. Uh, I have to commend you for uh, going ahead and buying long-term care insurance. I've got to tell you, if we did not have long-term care insurance, uh, it would have been a great deal harder to have cared for my wife. So uh, I'm not trying to sell anything, but Uh, I know the difference it made when you are talking about something that costs families thousands and thousands of dollars a year. Yeah, I get, you know, in my mortgage business, I get calls uh, weekly from financial advisors, attorneys, trust officers saying their client ran out of money, didn't buy long-term care insurance, so all they have is is a home to deal with, and whether they sell it or take a line of credit on that is up to them. Um, but it is going to be a financial crisis. I, I see it going forward. Um, we have one of the best Medicaid programs in the country. However, you know we're limited on bed space, and we're li- limited on people that qualified certified nurses aides. And, and I'm scared to think what's going to be five to ten years from now when they want to try and go on Medicaid, and they're going to say, well, I'm sorry, Tony, but there's a waiting list now. Well, actually, Purse, I think you should be scared sooner rather than later. Really? Because the way in which the federal government is now moving, uh, creating this huge deficit uh, with the new tax bill, if that goes through, uh, there are going to be cuts in Medicare, 
There are going to be cuts in Medicaid. We're going to see a serious challenge to the resources that we have now to say nothing of being able to accommodate even larger numbers of older people in the future. Yeah, it's a scary thought. I mean, uh, whether it was Trump or anybody else, we have our financial future, when it, I can't remember the figures, like 60% of, of the federal dollars goes to Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security, something like that. That's the biggest. In the state of Hawaii, it's, it's something like about 50% goes to um, our Medicaid and long-term care and our MedQuest programs and our state retirement. Uh, it's a scary thought that going forward it is. Um, so it's, it, it's really, um, I wouldn't say it's a tragic time, but it's a, it's a time where even like yourself going through the caregiving process, it's very difficult in the family. And, and so I have to really commend your kids. I, when Tony uh, was honored at the, at the dinner, you had, what, 10, 12, 15 family members there, friends, <laughs> 20? Yeah, I, I, I was fortunate. I had four of my kids there. <clears throat> the fifth one couldn't couldn't show up, but yeah, we had we had quite a crew. That was great. So don't forget to go on to our website, generations eight oh eight dot com to watch the current show. Otherwise try and catch it. We are, it's various days, Wednesday night, seven thirties, Monday five thirties. The rest of the days are all different times of the, the daytime, but check it out. So anyway, Tony, for HPGS, um, you know, where do you think that's going? What do you think we need to do as an organization to help the public, let alone our professionals in the field? Well, I will say, a person, um, I'm pleased to be able to say this. Um, during the last couple of years, under your leadership and with uh, Sherry Goya as our executive director, we uh, have been making real strides in particularly in the professional education. The webinars have been a very valuable feature. Uh, our conferences are important. Uh, and the newsletter itself is a vehicle that has been, I think, of great help to people who, uh, who read it. Uh, I would encourage people to join HPGS, um, and uh, participate with us. We need more folks uh, on our board and yep. our committees. And uh, I think you'll find that uh, being connected to other people in the aging network is, uh, is a valuable thing. Yeah, I tell people all the time, one of the things that we're, I'm trying to do, is, even with the magazine, is get people in our field that are dealing with family issues of aging, that they have to start developing friendships and partnerships and talking to people and, and creating their only book of resources because it's important. Uh, if, if, that's why a lot of times the spouses who's caring for their loved one pass away sooner than later because they're dealing with everything, paying the bills, cooking, cleaning, worrying about the doctors, appointments, driving, let alone maybe somebody taking care of their grandkids. Uh, it's just a burden on families, and, and so that's one of the things. If you want, if you get a chance, Hawaii Pacific Gerontological Society, uh, go to our website hpgs.org. Um, if you go to the library system, you can set up a, uh, a, a, um, your computer if you don't have a computer at home. But I highly recommend it because it, it's a great resource. And Tony also mentioned uh, an acronym earlier, AD, ADRC, which is a city and county website. I believe it's adrc.org. Um, Hawaii just Aging and Disability Resource Center. It's got a bunch of resources there. Um, you've been seeing commercials actually lately about the website and the need to help our loved ones and our seniors. So it's really important to take a look at that. As well, our Generations Magazine website, generations808.com. Look on our resources tab, and we have all the um, city and county agencies. Uh, this, this December issue, we have... Uh, contacts and, and workshops and nonprofits that work in the area of caregiving. So check that out as well because uh, that's probably the most important resource guide we have besides the discount page. Because <laughs> discount page, people love that page for seniors. But um, it's really important to seek those out. And unfortunately, as I told my, my loved ones and my family, that as you get older, it gets harder. And it's hard to grasp that, but it's going to happen. Hopefully you don't fall down. 
hopefully uh, you don't get Alzheimer's because I think right now that it's, it's around 50% uh, chance of getting Alzheimer's once you reach the age of 85. Yes, that's, that's around there. It's about 48 to 50%. And it's a scary thought that you're going to see more and more population in the state of Hawaii because that's actually the fastest growing age group, 85 plus in the state of Hawaii per capita. And to imagine... 20 years from now, there's going to be close to 50 people, 50,000 people with Alzheimer's dementia. And how do you deal with that? So anyway, we're here with Tony Lunzer talking about aging then and now. Uh, Tony Lunzer is actually the first director of Center on Aging at the University of Hawaii, now since retired. But we're going to take a short break, and we'll come back and talk about really the future of Hawaii and what we're going to have to start really looking forward to. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. with Percy Ihara from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM 690, The Answer. When you feel like Vegas, there's just one place to stay. Grab a drink at the Holo Holo Bar. There's just one place to play. We got a fresh hot look, a new sports book. We got those local meals, just like Auntie Cooks. Aloha, spoken here. Check out the Cow's new renovated look and see why the Cow is Hawaii's favorite place in Vegas to stay and play. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. If you're new to Medicare, we can help you work your way through all the questions, the details, and the headaches. Generations TV has gathered experts in the field to help you find the answers. This is Navigating Medicare. When it comes to Medicare supplement plans, or what we call Medigap plans, okay, these are plans that fill in the 20% that Medicare doesn't cover. And there's plans from Plan A all the way up to Plan N. When you're signing up for these plans, there are certain times when you have guaranteed issue. The Medicare Supplement Open Enrollment Period. Hi, I'm Ed Motosui, and I'm with Financial Benefits Insurance. We're a full-blown insurance company that deals with seniors. We help seniors understand Medicare so they can come to us, and we'll gladly help them understand all the Medicare health options. Helping you work your way through the confusion, navigating Medicare. Brought to you today by Financial Benefits Insurance, serving the entire state of Hawaii from the corner of P.E. Koi and Kapi'olani in Honolulu. Oahu's newest senior living community, Ilima at Lehano, is now open in the heart of Kapolei. Within this beautiful new community, offering independent living, assisted living, and memory care, you will experience a feeling of ohana that provides a sense of community and peace of mind for our kupuna. A range of spacious apartment styles are available, from large studios to spacious one- and two-bedroom plans, most with a large private lanai. Be one of the first to call Ilima your home. Visit ilima at lehano.com. Or call 674-8022. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from six ninety nine. dollars Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591 591- 4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Hi, I'm Margaret Wong with the Copeland Insurance Group. Let us be your Medicare resource throughout the year. We have agents throughout the islands to be of assistance to you. So if you have Medicare questions, we have the answers. Call us at 808-591-4877. Again, 808-591-4877. Thank you. 
We look forward to hearing from you. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Hauer from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Complete board five nine packages from six ninety nine. Vacations Hawaii, your favorite connection to Vegas. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. So welcome back to Generations Radio, and thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I know if you listen to it live, Saturday from 5 to 6 or Sunday from 3 to 4, great. If not, you can go to our website or our, Google, our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, by the way, and you'll see all these past radio shows that we archive, every one of them. But on the December-January issue, uh, on the cover, we have five, uh, and one of them is here, Mr. Tony Lunzer. But we also have Jerry Correa, who's on top left. He is the head of St. Francis Hospital and their Kapuna Village over there. On the far right is Miss Chris, Miss Chris Ridley, who actually um, just retired or actually left the state of Hawaii. She was at the Hilo uh, Life Care Center, uh, but she's dealing with some family issues, so she moved to the mainland. Uh, she's very involved with Alzheimer's on the Big Island. So, Chris, thank you very much. She did a wonderful job and helped several hundred thousands of families there. On the bottom right is uh, Mapuana Ta'amu. Uh, she works as our social media girl, but has been doing caregiving for six years, is certified and trained in Alzheimer's and caring for Alzheimer's, specifically patients. And on the far left, on the bottom left is uh, Jackie Bolin, who does all the community events for uh, ARP. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to go to workshops, if you want to go to events, ARP does a tremendous job. Just about every month of the year, they have a, a workshop somewhere around the state. Uh, I know a lot of them are in Oahu, but you should give them a call, uh, check them out, um, go to their website, ARP, I think, dot org slash Hawaii, and look, they have a calendar there. But very soon, starting in January, they're going to be putting all the events on our Generations 808 calendar, by the way. And so... If you're listening to the show, uh, let us let you know that Gener- Gener- Generations TV has started. Uh, it's on Oceana Cable, Wednesday night, 7.30 at night. Monday's at 5.30 at night. Uh, and the rest of the day is during the daytime. And I always say Wednesday because uh, we start every other Wednesday. We have a new show. Every two weeks we run out. So for two weeks straight, the same show runs. And we flip out a new show every other Wednesday. So, And actually, this, this Generations TV show features Tony, a uh, retired professor from University of Hawaii, uh, and, and I was tell you, Tony, you are like the matriarch of our, our family in Hawaii. You were the first one that really got us going. You started center on aging at the University of Hawaii, and you know you co-founded HPGS.org. So I have to really thank you and give you a lot of credit for somebody who's in the twenties coming to Hawaii. Uh, I know you had a job, but learning about aging. And you know, I started fifteen years ago, and I'm still learning. Well, and so am I, Perth, and <laughs> I'm in my 80s, but uh, just a slight correction. Uh, if you don't mind, m- make it the patriarch rather than patriarch. the ma- okay. matriarch. Oh, yeah, patriarch, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Your heart was in the right yeah, place. Yeah, so, so we featured Tony and the four other, four different decades that are dealing with uh, in the senior industry. From a twenty-something-year-old girl, Mapuana, to Tony, our patriarch, and we have a Jack who's in her forty, I believe. Uh, Jerry Correa's in his fifties. Chris Ridley's in her sixties, and we wanted to kind of give you, our, our listeners, but all our readers and our viewers on television, to give you a little bit more background information on aging in Hawaii, also the, what's going on currently, and also the future on, on in aging in Hawaii, which is very, very important to start taking that to heart. You know, I, I belong to several boards, and one of the boards I belong to is the Financial Planning Association of Hawaii. It's a national organization. and 
I've been involved with them probably 20 plus years. And last year, 2016 was the first year we finally dedicated a conference, a majority of the conference to aging. Because for financial planners, they're aging themselves, but they're dealing with all their clients now who come to them saying, you know, my, my dad, we need to pull more money out. Or why don't you tell me long-term care is so expensive? Or they're saying, I'm glad I bought long-term care insurance like my parents and like myself because they're dealing with that now. And it, it's a scary thought going down the road. But I, I really wanted to take some time to thank our partners, Kahlo Kahlo Gardens, Ilima Lehano, Kahala Nui, uh, Poai Nani, the Plaza Assisted Living, uh, 15 Craig Site, St. Francis, we have all of them in here, including the, the ones on the North Shore, uh, the senior living place out there. I'm trying to find in the magazine because I always forget their name. Uh, i got to have them come in town more often and talk to me. Um, but uh, we also have um, the Valley of the Temples, which is brand new. It's been there for a while, but they are great supporters. In fact, we had Jerry uh, Fred Collins on last week. Uh, it was a week ago. Um, but I'll find that one property out in the North Shore side. But anyway, Tony, so going forward, you know, since when you started in the 60s and 70s and 80s and you really experienced as you retired, where do you see the future uh, for state and city and the University of Hawaii going forward? I know we just hired a great uh, gerontologist, uh, Dr. Margaret Peggy Perkinson, which we honored uh, last week. But I'm glad we finally got a full-time position, a permanent position. Yeah, well, first, uh, there have been really significant changes from the early days to now. Let me give you an example. Uh, probably the most popular theory of aging when I first started out was called the disengagement theory. And okay. this was the idea that as you got older, you kept reducing your social contacts mm -hmm. and your activities to the point where you would be getting ready for the end of your life. Okay. So the whole idea was this was preparation for death by restricting your activities and your life. Now that uh, theory has been shown n not, not to be a good predictor of how people age. There are people for whom that still applies, but we have many more people who do not constrict their lives as they get older, some who expand their lives and go in new directions and do things that they had not had an opportunity yes. to do before. And that, of course, is the positive aspect of aging. So we now have concepts like active aging, successful aging, all of which suggest that you now have a period of 15, 20, 25 years in which you can do a great many things that you had not perhaps had an opportunity to do when life expectancy was much shorter, when people worked right to the end, and when they did not have the knowledge or the resources to use that extra 20 or 25 years. Yeah, when people retire, a lot of times... Um a lot of their closest friends are their coworkers, and I was I was golfing with a bunch of uh, guys last week, and he goes, "Yeah, I just retired in September. I've been retired now for a couple months now, and boy, I, I didn't realize how difficult it, it is to live with my wife now because we're both home all day long." <laughs> all of us were just laughing with about twenty guys in our golf club, and it's like, interesting how I said, "Yeah, I mean, when you when you retire, you have to you're with your wife all day long, and uh, uh, now you're not the boss anymore." And the dynamics of a relationship does alter a little bit. And I was telling the guys, yeah, you got to get to that uh, to-do list, the honey-do list. Um, you might have to help cooking. You might have to help out with cleaning the house like my father does. And so it's, it's a really a dynamic change, isn't it? Good point. 
Yeah, uh, exactly right. And people don't think about that no. as an important aspect of aging. And of course, for others, particularly men, uh, if they lose their spouse, uh, they have another whole set of problems that develop. And it's generally been shown that if you compare men and women as widows or widowers, women are much more successful widowers than are men who tend to get sick sooner and die sooner than their female counterparts. And a large part of that is that women have always had a greater tendency toward interaction with others, right. uh, seeking and giving support, and being able to uh, express their uh, their needs, emotional and otherwise, in ways that often men can't or don't. Yeah, it's actually, regarding their comment there about men and women, Tony, I'm not too sure if you saw the first show of Generations Magazine, the TV show. It's on our website, on our YouTube channel. If you get a chance, it features um, Willili Community Center. But we also feature the Men's Shed. And the Men's Shed is the first in the United States and uh, there are now since a year ago two in the U.S. on the mainland. Uh, and the men's shed is, is a group of guys, 30 to 40 to 50 guys that get together th- several times a week at their facility in San Island. Just fix things, work on stuff. I'm not, I'm not sure if you saw that. But Glenn Sears, the, the founder and original one that brought that idea from, from Rotary Club in Australia to Hawaii, he was talking about how men don't communicate like women. Women talk face-to-face. Men talk shoulder-to-shoulder. And I was watching the show and the taping, like, he's absolutely right. Men will be golfing together or maybe fixing things. Oh, by the way, Tony, they won't talk to you directly about while you're doing an event. They won't call you up, Tony, I got to talk to you. I got to serious. They don't do that. Women do. You know, so it's interesting, the dynamics. And you're absolutely right. It's something that I, uh, ben, ben Shed, by the way, has found a new place. Uh, they'll be next year um, down off across Aloha Tower somewhere down there. But if you get a chance, you men out there, the Men's Shed, check out the magazine. If you go to generations808.com, just on the search bar, click on right in Men's Shed. You know, we had two articles on them. Since then, like I said, uh, there's two in the mainland U.S. There's 1,000 clubs in Australia, and there's several hundred in Canada. Mm. Why the U.S. has not, I don't know. But it's a great, great place to go and talk to other guys. There's all walks of life there, from attorneys to regular hotel workers to engineers to there's one young guy by the way but there's no age limit but most of them are retired but the young guys said in, in the show is saying he learned a lot from these older guys which is so true you know so true but it's a it's a great it's a great thing for men's shed but you know, tony you started back in the back in the day in the was it late 80s um you, you talked about you guys did a, a a show in coordination with pbs and some teachings on, uh, actually it was a series on, on pbs was it about aging and different tips and resources? Yeah, we did actually a 13-hour television series called Growing Old in a New Age. And by we, I mean a group of us at the Center on Aging. And uh, then we had a production crew headed by my then son-in-law, Jay Curley. Wow. And uh, we... Uh, interviewed older people and experts in the field of aging in Hawaii and a number of mainland cities. Uh, as Catherine uh, Braun pointed out at our uh, at our dinner the other night, uh, we we only had a million dollars to do thirteen hours of television. Unbelievable! So, Back in that day, that's a lot of money. That was a lot of money, but wow. not really. A lot of money for what we were trying to do. Thirteen hours of television is a lot of a lot of work. Anyway, that is. We would interview at uh, aging conferences where we might be able to get our hands on half a dozen of the experts all in one place, rather than having to right. seek them out in their on their home turf. Um, that was a very exciting activity. 
uh, hard work. Uh, we were doing that in addition to our other activity at UH. And uh, we did uh, manage to get that as a show on, uh, well, somewhere between 80 and 100 public television stations Around throughout the country. the country. Wow. And we had over 150 colleges that licensed the course to use as a credit course on campus. That's so incredible. It, it turned out to have been, for its time, a pretty valuable resource. Yeah. And I think, is it still around, or is there some place we can, is archived someplace that we can, they can take a look at that? Not really. I don't think it's on air anywhere at this point. Uh, there, there are undoubtedly copies of the DVDs or other copies of the series, but it's not available. Nearly 30 years ago, almost. Yeah. It's incredible, but has has aging and the issues of aging changed since then, you think? Some have, but some haven't. There are some parts of that show. I watched the pilot um, a couple of months ago, which was on social roles and relationships, uh-huh. and that could have been done today. Really? Yeah. Dashi, um, if you get a chance, guys, um, one, of the, one of the better um, resources I found to learn about – Hawaii's specific aging is uh, almost 10 years ago now, there was a documentary done um, by um, Mark and Audrey there uh, called The Graying of Hawaii. And if you go online and Google it, The Graying of Hawaii, um, it, it's just in two parts. It's about an hour, almost two hours uh, long but in two parts. But I was watching, I watched it and I showed clips of that, that documentary kind of portrayal of Hawaii's aging and caregiving issues I, I show it at my workshops and after i show that i tell people this what you're seeing now is almost 10 years old and we're still talking about all these issues and still um, um my co-host is actually on, was quoted on there cullen hayashita was quoted on there saying it's time we need to start getting government in fact the re- in fact it was actually the at the time mary harry kim said it's time the state has fallen behind and look at him. He retired, and Mayor Billy Kenoy, and now look at him. He's back to be American. And I'm not sure how old he is. He's got to be in his 80s, you know, but he's still going strong. But uh, it's amazing how these issues have not really changed. And actually, in my personal opinion, maybe yours, Tony, it's probably gotten worse. Well, to some extent it has because there are more uh, older folks and older older folks than there used to be, yeah. which means there's more illness and disability than there used to be, and we don't have all the resources that we really need. Yeah. I always quote, in, in, back in that, that documentary, is um, that one of the people in the state of Hawaii was saying that the average back then, nearly 10 years ago, was 46 beds per 1,000 people, nursing beds. state of Hawaii at the time... I don't think it's grown much. We only had 22 beds per 1,000 people, which is less than half. I don't think that's grown much because our population has grown as well. But isn't that a scary thought? Less than half the national average in, in nursing beds in the state of Hawaii. Well, that's one scary thought. Let me give you another one. <laughs> oh, Tony, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Actually, the major resource for caring for older people is family. Right. And... The number of family members per elder has been gradually decreasing. Mm. So the number of people who are available to help care for the older person at home or wherever he or she might be is getting smaller, which means we become more dependent upon these uh, paid resources and we know we don't have enough of those. Yeah. So the pieces that we're talking about do not add up to a very cheerful picture at the moment. Right. We're here with Tony Lunzer, retired professor Tony Lunzer, who was a first director on aging at the Center of Aging at University of Hawaii. 
we're talking about then and now, and it's a scary thought. I mean, fortunately for us, we have a large family. We can we can tag team and take care of our parents, even though they have long term care insurance. But you're absolutely right, with especially with the the amount of kids that go back to go to mainland, go to college, and come and stay there. But I, when I'm I'm 57, I'm noticing now people in the 60s are coming back, retiring, coming after living in mainland for 20, 30 years, coming back to do what? Take care of their parents. And it, it, it is a scary thought. Oh yeah, Leah, Leah, our engineer, looking at me, what? Yeah, my wife came back in in uh, in her 40s to help take care of her mom. Uh, Luckily, like she did because I didn't met her and what 20 years ago. But yeah, it's it incredible the just this trend we're seeing today. So one of the biggest things, Tony, that I want to kind of pick your brain about was I, I've been advocating and promoting uh, planning for long-term care and caregiving. And to this day, we still don't have enough people talking to their families. How do we get them to talk to the family before the crisis mode sets in, where you get a phone call, dad's in the hospital. Now everything's stressful. We have to make major decisions. How do we get, besides reading Generations Magazine, our TV show and radio show, how do we get people to understand it? this is something that's coming, it's here, and you got a plan? Well, you're absolutely right. And there was uh, a kind of an earlier attempt to do this when the Executive Office on Aging was awarded a grant of uh, 500000 to create a public awareness mm. program. I do think that we need the best talents of our advertising and public relations community to craft the messages that will make people pay attention. I don't think we've had that uh, that kind of expertise put on this task, but. To me, that would be a very useful thing if we could get the best talent available. We're really talking about selling something here. Yeah, We're selling a, a whole concept, a whole set of ideas about aging. And instead of amateurs, I think we need professionals to help us do that job. Very true, very true. And, and you know, even we've been doing it eight years. We're, I still consider ourselves in the magazine and TV shows amateurs, but we're getting better at it, and we are definitely going to be promoting uh, this plan going forward. Tony, we've got a couple of minutes left. What would you like to say to families out there when, through your experiences then and now, what they should be doing? Well, I hope that, first of all, that families will be uh, using – the time that they have to pay a little bit more attention to aging in their own family circle and among their neighbors as well. Uh, So many times older people will be living in a community but maybe living alone because uh, their spouse has died or perhaps they've never, they've never been married and, uh, so I think if it would be very helpful if people would be looking around their neighborhood and seeing who's, who's there and what is it that maybe we can do just to establish and maintain contact with uh, older folks who maybe don't have anyone else uh, that they can depend on. So that's one area that... Uh, could be uh, could be further developed, and I hope it will. Within families, I think um, there are now so many resources, both on the web and in person, and available to families that uh, they they need to just become aware that they are not in this alone. Yeah, that's true. So check out Tony and the rest of our uh, senior leaders there on the December, January issue of Generations Magazine. Dr. Tony Lonzer, thank you very much. I appreciate all you've done you, that you continue to do and fight for in the age of, of uh, aging uh, and uh, live well, as I always tell people, my friends. 
So anyway, thank you very much. Check us out on generations808.com and every Friday, Sunday from 3 to 4, Saturday from 5 to 6. Aloha, everybody. Have a happy holidays.